Hi, I'm Dennis DiCicco for Sky and Telescope Magazine here at the 2015 Northeast Astronomy Forum in Suffern, New York. And right now, it's my pleasure to be speaking with Steve Bisk, president of Software Bisk. If there's a name in astronomy that viewers probably know, it's Software Bisk. And rather than have me give you a little bit of background, I wanted Steve to talk a little bit about the history of the company to let viewers know just how long you've been in this game. Okay. Yeah, we actually started selling our astronomy software called The Sky back in 1983. As a matter of fact, we placed our first advertisement in Sky and Telescope magazine in the September 1984 issue. It's been quite um, a while. Yep, and uh, subsequent to that, we um, made a lot of improvements to the software, and through the years, uh, started controlling various telescopes, telescope mounts on the market, and it came to a point when we uh, started putting automation into our software, where, where we realized that most of the commercially available telescope mounts were not up to the task of doing all night automation. So being young and foolish enough, we decided <laughs> that we would switch from being a, just a software company to also being a, a hardware company, and we started experimenting with various robotic telescope mounts. I think it's safe to say that most readers realize today that they can use computers to control their telescope mounts, the automated go-to mounts. What they may not realize, and I think in all honesty, you deserve the credit for writing the book on how this is done. Well, that was our, our long-term goal, was to um, use, exploit the power of the personal computer more and more to help astronomy. And of course, the logical next step was automation and having your telescope run all night long and greet you in the morning with the data so you didn't have to spend all night doing it. Good. Um, let's take a look at some of the stuff that you have on display here. And since we're standing in front of the ME2, which is your flagship mount, why don't you tell me about this one first? Okay. So uh, this is the Paramount ME2. It's actually the fourth generation of this particular mount. And it can shoulder uh, about 250 pounds of astronomical equipment. Just on the telescope side. Just on the telescope side. So it's suitable for uh, half meter telescopes and smaller. And um, it's driven with brushless DC servo motors and it's tied into our entire suite of astronomy software, which enables you to um, learn the errors of the mount um, through calibrating with stars. And like our other mounts, um, we exploit the software to make the mount track better and point that better so that you can do things like um, um, all night automation and um, gathering data while you sleep. Right. I know we have reviewed several of these mounts in the magazine and I know from experience that some of their incredible power is the integration with the software. It's not just software that says go to find an object. It's the ability to refine the pointing to arc second accuracy to start the mount remotely. It's amazing stuff. Thanks. Uh, it's been great because once we got the automation working with our mounts, uh, amateur astronomers for the first time started doing great discoveries of supernovas, um, asteroids, even extrasolar planets by having the ability to have the mount work through the night and gather data while they were sleeping. All in an automated mode. Yes. You want to show me some of the quick features? Sure. Um, one of the things we've got is We've got a built-in USB hub in the mount, which allows you to run a couple of USB devices with cables that already go through the mount, so you don't have to mess with the, the cables dragging around as the, the telescope slews around. Uh, additionally, we've got this panel here, which allows you to add a bunch of additional things, such as Ethernet cables, um, video cables, and that sort of thing. So with the ability to run any kind of cable up through the mount, um, it eliminates a lot of the problems that you can have when you're not at the observatory. Um, many of these mounts are used in observatories that are either 100 feet away in the backyard or a uh, thousand miles away uh, across the country. And when you can't go out there and fix things, you want to make sure that everything remains reliable all night long. Um, one an additional feature that makes that possible is our home feature, which when you start the mount and you home it, it goes back to the same points extremely accurately. So anytime you have a power outage or any problem with the mount, all you have to do is restart it and you can get right back to where you were. It knows where it is with precision. You don't even have to recalibrate it, find guide stars, just yes. turn it on in the homing function. And again, I know that from the reviews. It's very precise. So, and as you say, with cables 
being an issue when you're not there to have your cable and from your cameras or whatever coming off of the telescope, going right into the telescope saddle, and then moving out from a non-moving part of the mount. You have nothing to snag, nothing to catch. It's a real ideal situation. Yes, and the through the mount cabling feature is found in all models of our mounts. And this is our Paramount MX. It's the intermediate size mount that we offer. It can handle up to about 100 pounds of telescope and uh, it weighs about 50 pounds. So it's somewhat portable, um, maybe a little bit big for some people, but uh, at 50 pounds, you, it's transportable and it works just as well in an observatory as it does out in the field. Well, that's a good point that these can be used portably because I know these mounts have a couple of very nice features when you're setting up and taking things down, stuff that needs to get adjusted. Want to show people about those? Yes. Um, for example, uh, balancing the mount is very easy. It's just a turn of a, a single knob which allows you to rotate the axis freely so that you can get it balanced for the evening. Uh, another uh, really nice feature that we have for the portable use is calibrated altitude and azimuth adjustments. So after going out with the, the software and taking a dozen or so images of, of stars, you can come back and it will tell you how far you have to move it. And we've got ticks built into the mount which aid you in, in moving it the exact amount to get it precisely polar aligned, which is incredibly important for astrophotography. Correct, yeah, it's, getting the mount polar aligned is uh, a difficult thing when you're portable, and the easier you can make that, the better. All right, so you have your software, make, you view a few stars, software tells you you need to adjust the mount, and you've got calibrated ticks that you just turn the knob the right amount and get yourself polar aligned. Yep, and um, when you're gathering that data for the, the pointing model, um, we employ pattern recognition, so the, the mount sort of turns into a robot for a short period and goes out and takes pictures of the stars, determines exactly where those pictures are as opposed to where the mount thinks it is, and by taking all that data and combining it, it can um, determine the errors in the mount, the errors in your polar alignment, and, and fix all those things. And this is something that can be done with the brighter stars in twilight. Yes. So while you're getting, before you're, you're not using a lot of valuable observing time, you can get this set up and running, be ready to rock and roll, shall we say. Yep, and by the time it's dark, you're, you're ready to start firing. While we're on the topic of portability, you make the tripods for these mounts as well, right? Yes, we do. We've got tripods for all of our mounts. Uh, this particular one we call the Pyramid Portable Pier. It's a very stable tripod, um, and it's got some neat features. For example, you can adjust the leveling without um, having to go down to the ground and make the adjustment on the feet. Uh, it weighs about 22 pounds, so it's very light and very easy to move around. So if you really want to see portability, uh, we can show you the Paramount Mighty. This is our newest entry into the mount, our mount line, and it weighs just 34 pounds, the, the head does, um, and it breaks down into several parts. You can take the counterweight shaft off, and uh, the counterweight, of course, and then the unit um, quickly collapses down into a small form factor so it can fit into a relatively small box. Uh, some of the other features um, that make it portable, yeah, there's a 56 volt battery that will run the mount for the entire night that's rechargeable that you can pick up at uh, Home Depot. So we've made an adapter to couple to that so that you've got a, a good power source and you don't have to um, worry about uh, lead acid batteries and that sort of thing. An important point to bring up, we're talking about the portability here, but all of the electric functions, all of the capabilities of your bigger mounts, the computer control, is all available in this as well? Yes, it is. And as a matter of fact, uh, this mount uses the same motors, the same control system, and the full suite of software that the other mounts use. So you've got pretty much all of the capabilities, except for the ability to carry very large telescopes, within this mount. So if you wanted to put this mount in your observatory and run it remotely or do all night automation, it's perfectly suitable for that, but it also can go into the field. All right, it just has the lighter capacity. Yes. All right, well this brings up an interesting point, especially where it's portable. What happens if people don't want to drag a lot of a computer equipment out with it? Can you run it without having heavy duty computers yes. available? We, we have an iOS app called the Sky HD and it enables you to go out, especially for visual purposes, because 
Um, the iOS apps don't have the ability to control the cameras and, and all those things. Right. So if you want to take this out and, and do visual, you can use our iOS app to control it. So this would run on Apple mobile devices, the iPhone, the iPad, the mini iPad? Correct. And it gives people all of the, you have your planetarium software, so you've got your graphic interface with the star charts, and you can do all the go-to functions with the telescope. Yes, and we've got all the same databases that we have on our desktop version in the Sky HD. Wow. Now what about wires? How do you connect to the mini iPad? Um, we have an optional, what we call a Y-Sky device, um, which you plug into our control system, and it allows you to control it wirelessly through uh, the wireless. Network. So I don't even have to have any wires connected to it. It just uses the wireless connection. Yep, and you can just control it from the iPad. So. That's great. Want to talk a little bit about the tripod you have for this one, since it's different than the others? Yes. One of the options for the Paramount Mighty is our uh, tripod. Uh, it's got some great features for portability. First of all, it only weighs about 18 pounds, so it's very light. It collapses down real quickly and fits into the fits bag. Fits into the bag there. Yep. Um, it's got um, some hooks in it so that you can hang that battery that we referenced earlier um, right on it. And, and so it's a real clean just battery right up into the, the control system. No and dangling we, wires. Right. And we've got some special features for making it real easy to level the tripod um, at the beginning of the night. We put uh, three level bubbles on it, one for each leg, and that makes it uh, so much easier to know exactly what, which axis that you're moving, and, and so you can quickly get the bubble into the middle and then move on to the next leg. And then once you've done that for all three legs, the top should be level and ready for the mount to be put on it. Now it's an interesting point because I have over the years made the point that in most cases it's not critical to get a mount absolutely level when you're going for polar alignment. But your routines, the systems that you've set up with these telescopes do sort of rely on things being level. Yeah, and in lieu of a polar scope, um, we've got procedures that if you get the mount level and because the mount homes so accurately, we can use those two fiduciaries uh, to get you a good polar alignment in a short period of time without the polar scope. And we opted to not put a polar scope on this because the through the mount cabling kind of gets in the way of that and we think the through the mount cabling is a more important feature than the polar scope if you've got a, a good way to, to align them. Mount. Okay. So how do you get the software loaded and everything established to start out? Well, um, as a matter of fact, our databases have become so large that it no longer fits on a DVD. So we've put it on a 16 gigabyte thumb drive, and that thumb drive is both Mac and Windows compatible. The other thing about our software is we are cross-platform, and we can we support the Mac as well as Windows. All right, so when you deliver the software, it's just a thumb drive, you plug it in, it's all the software for controlling the mount, all the databases and everything just on a simple thumb drive. Yep, as a matter of fact, it, it, runs on both Windows and Mac, and so a single thumb drive will install on both either of those operating systems, and you have all the software required for controlling not only the mount, but the other devices that you might be using during the evening. Actually, one more point. I know we can't get into the specifics of every computer that somebody might have, but you have state-of-the-art software, state-of-the-art equipment. Do I have to have a state-of-the-art computer to run this? Well, you need a certain amount of horsepower, but certainly any computer that you can buy today in any of the Best Buys or any other store has got plenty of power to run the, the software suite. All right, so that means that a lot of laptops and computers that are out there now will handle this just fine. Absolutely. All right. Well, listen. If people want more information on any of your products, they can go to your website, which is? www.bisc.com. All right, very good. Steve, thank you for showing me about this and telling me a little bit about the company. I'm Dennis DiCicco for Sky and Telescope Magazine here at NEEF 2015.